Joining us now to discuss a lot of news is former New York City mayor and the newest member of President Trump's legal team, Mr. Rudy Giuliani. Mr. Mayor, <laughs> always a pleasure. Thank you for being Thank with us. Thank you for having uh, me back. Uh, two matters of news to discuss, and then we have to get into this right. full-throated um, conversation about mm -hmm. what you believe is happening with the probe. First, are you okay? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. I'm absolutely fine. So, reports about the pedicab? <laughs> yeah, the pedicab took more damage, I think. All right, so what I heard was, <laughs> tell me if this is right or wrong, that in the side view mirror, you saw a squeegee guy, or what you thought was a squeegee guy. <laughs> I jumped out you, of the car. And you opened the door into him. Is that Almost. true? Almost. Actually, I saw Chris Christie, and I wanted to prevent him from, getting, from destroying the pedicab. <laughs> All right, good. So you're good. That's good to know. Uh, this news that you believe that... According to the special counsel and their investigative team, there may be a narrowing of questions. Is that accurate? Yes, it is. It's accurate as of uh, Wednesday night. We, uh, Wednesday night, we received a communication from them. Now, we did, we did go through like five letters. But we didn't get a response. And then they sent us a, a response. I, I can't go into detail, but narrowing the, the subjects for questioning down to about two. And uh, from all I, like 50 of those, yeah, that, that so list that came them, out from Sekolo. You could actually have divided those, and I did, into like five categories, subject oh, areas. All right, that's so, fair. So, five, maybe seven. So three right. are down, are out. Uh, I mean, no, no secret that the whole uh, thing with Michael Cohen's out, because that's in the Southern District of New York. You believe that Mueller has turned over all of that investigation, or do you think he may have reserved certain aspects? It's my belief that he turned all of it over. Now, all that, of it. That doesn't mean they don't communicate, as they, as they should. They should communicate. Or that he could reclaim an aspect would of have it to based show, on it findings? Would, that would send us a signal that he believed there was a connection to the president. As long as he leaves it there, he believes there isn't a connection to the president, which seems, from everything I know, to be correct. That's a, that's a, a, a whether you, whatever you think of it, that's an independent issue. Uh, and, I, and it doesn't depend uh, at all on the resolution of this one. No, All right. No. So as far as you know, Mueller isn't looking at Cohen. That's about the Southern District. And, and the Southern District uh, ha basically isn't looking at the president. If he's in the rearview mirror somewhere, who knows? But okay. we'll keep an eye on that. So that's off the table. What else is off the table? I can't really say. The rest, and, the, and some of it is subject to negotiation. The, the main focus that we want, I can tell you, simply is uh, Russia. Was there a connection with Russia? We, we see that the, that the uh, report in the New York Times, which we think is... Is, is sort of a prophecy of what's going to be revealed by Horowitz, who's the IG of, mm -hmm. uh, of justice, is that as of the beginning of the Mueller investigation, after a 100-day investigation, the FBI found no connection with uh, President Trump for Russia. Uh, now, here, here's, the, here's the issue that I really feel strongly about with this informant, if there is one. First of all, I don't know for sure, nor does the president, if there really was one. We're told that. Uh, told that by whom? But told that by people who, for a long time, we've been told that there's some, there was some kind of infiltration. At one time, the president thought it was a wiretap. There were there were there were some uh, Pfizer applications, but we've never been notified that he was on a on, on a tap or an intercept. There's never been any proof that he was on a wiretap either. No, but 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 he did say it as fact many times. I think he I think he he thought that. I mean I think I know, but that doesn't make it true. That's part of the oh. problem with understanding this situation. It the president it does, it, feels something, states it as fact. There winds up being no may, proof, he, but he now may, you have a lot of people may, who believe may, it. He may turn out to be closer to the truth than people thought, because if there, we're told there were two uh, infiltrations, two embedded people in the campaign. And now, when you say you were told, just let's yeah. clear the record. You mean you're gleaning this from the reporting that's out there? No, the reporting corroborates what people have told us uh, off the record. Uh, you don't know if they're right or not. There are people who knew a little about the investigation, either are gone from the FBI. The president this morning may have is been quoting a Fox News commentator as his source uh, of being concerned about this. This is a man who has almost plenary authority to pick up the phone and say to the oh DOJ, did you put somebody in my if campaign? You, it, it, uh, hmm? I, that would be, that would probably, with the DOJ and the current situation that it's in, so frightened of any intrusion, that would be probably really misunderstood. Look, they should tell us if there was. I mean, they, they, their obligation is on them to The president us. has not been shy now, about course, talking to people at the top of the investigation about what he wants to know. He w asked the person running the investigation well, I don't think, to say publicly he as was his clear. Lawyer, as his lawyer, I, I think that has to go through the White House counsel's office or possibly us. Shouldn't go through him. But I, I, I want to know because I believe if there was an embedded person, that person cleared us because the FBI cleared us. 
I, I wonder what the heck is the legitimacy of the Mueller investigation in the first place. The FBI came to the conclusion there was no evidence of collusion with Russia. End of case. How do we know that? It's, it's in the New York Times yesterday, paragraph One, 50. Let's just go on the record here also. Rudy Giuliani, president's lawyer, is using the New York Times as a good source. A source that the president <laughs> assails only because it suits his advantage in the but, moment. But, uh, Chris... It's the, good to hear you own Chris, the, the media the, should be trusted. Uh, every once in a while. Chris, the reality is the New York Times is trying to take the wind out of the sails of the Horowitz Report. The Horowitz Report, I guarantee you, can be far worse. Look, we haven't seen the report. We all welcome it. Yeah, what we, we know for did sure... The McCabe, right? He nailed McCabe as a flat-out liar. Well... Yes. And then Comey disowned McCabe. <laughs> yes. Loyal. Comey. And why am I pausing? Because what he was lying about also matters. And it is not something that goes to the truth of what you want to push, which is that the probe is out to get the president. But he's a liar. Fine. <laughs> I'm not disputing FBI that, agent. nor have I ever. And what how I'm about, saying how about is he Comey? Was lying. Comey, Comey's a flat out leaker. But hold on a second. One at a time. What McCabe was doing was fanning the flames of his own intentions about going after Hillary Clinton. Right. So that does not shed any light unless you use the old legal Latin edict of falsus in uno, falsus in tuto. He <laughs> lied about one thing, so he's lying about everything. He is not proof of a dirty probe against Trump. That's what you and the president are pushing, which is easier for him to do than you in a way, which oh, we'll get no, to later. Chris. He wants to say the probe is wrong, right. that it is dirty, right. and that it is out to get him, and so. he is using... We do not know that any of that is true. true. It is. How it's, is it first true? Of all, first of all, it's not based on an illegitimate uh, uh, source, Comey. Comey, Comey uh, writes a memo. Clearly FBI property. I'm sorry, he's the FBI director. Mm -hmm. Can't get around that. Uh, he then does something for which FBI agents would be fired and maybe go to jail. He leaks the memo to, to a, a professor who gives it to the press with the intention of getting it to the press. Maybe, maybe not, right? That analysis well, maybe, of what he did is more complex. Huh? Because he's a damn liar. Jim Comey is, can't be trusted on anything. He, of course but he, he leaked it. He, but he said that he leaked it. So how is he a liar? Well, he's a liar because he said he didn't think that the professor was, gonna, was going to necessarily give it out to the press. No. He the other said... was going to talk about it. It's not what he said in the interviews I saw. He said the opposite. He said, I gave it to him to distribute it. I didn't do it myself because I thought that that would create I'm different a sneaky, compromises. Because I'm a, I'm a sneaky liar. No, that's what you said. That but, is, well, that's the but that's also right? not what started the probe. Yes, it is. The probe went to Mueller because all of a sudden, Sessions had recused himself. Rosenstein decided he needed a special prosecutor. And, he, and Rosenstein goes and selects the guy that Trump had just turned down for FBI director. Hold on. Two we'll figure that. Two questions. One, he didn't turn him down. He met with him about working he for the FBI. And then he got picked special counsel right after it. Totally, totally wrong. The reporting on it is I know the that reporting. he never That's said why the to him. the reporting is wrong. So you're saying that the president told Bob Mueller you're told not Rosen's getting the FBI that he job. He wasn't getting the FBI job. I, I don't think we should have a, a when, rerun. In what context? In the context of right after the interview. No. So, but well, and within I don't know if it's a day or two days. But, when he was selected. Well, hold on. There's no, why would the president of the United States call Rosenstein and say, hey, I just interviewed Bob Mueller for FBI. He's not getting the job. That's what I did all the time if I didn't, if I didn't want somebody. But why would you call the head I'm of the narrowing. What does he have to do with it? Because he doesn't I'm get to pick the head of the FBI. Nobody sat in on the interview. But why would he have called him about that? Because he sat in on the interview. He's sharing, he's sharing his thoughts with him. I would do that. And so then hearing that the president doesn't think he's fit for the FBI, Rosenstein then says, That's I think I he's perfect for the special counsel. I, I guess. Why would Rosenstein do that? I don't know why Rosenstein has done a lot of things he's done. I don't know why he would expand. The president picked him, so it's the president's the president guy. didn't pick him. Jeff picked him. President who's, and whose guy is Jeff? Sessions. Uh, totally different. My commissioners would pick people. I don't. I didn't now, know if they were look, good or bad. I'm just saying no, that's, wait a, second, that's Chris, a little bit of a shaky Chris, scenario. You're really, you're getting, you're really getting off the point. The Please. point is, the point is that the the whole the whole uh, investigation is totally illegitimate. The question of whether there was collusion with the Russian had been resolved in the first uh, investigation by the FBI, which the Times revealed, which Horowitz is going to analyze in in a couple of weeks. And in that investigation, there's a memo that says that there's no, at least twice, no evidence of collusion with the Russians on, uh, on the part of Donald Trump. End of story. But how shouldn't be an investigation. But first no, of all, no, ba no probable cause for anything. But we don't know what Mueller has and doesn't have, especially well, that, you. If anybody's going to respect the process, it now should be Mueller, you. Now Mueller comes after the fact. I'm not blaming Mueller. But you're leaving out a huge event that precipitated the special counsel. What? The firing of James Comey. And what's wrong with that? By the president and of the United States. Well, arguably, 
nothing, or a lot because of why he did it. Well, uh, which he has jumped tell, around. Tell, tell on. me what the why would be. The why would be to interfere with the investigation when they, when, when in fact uh, he said a couple days later to Lester Holt, I knew it would expand the investigation. I knew it would extend the investigation. Sorry, no, it would take longer. The way I understand it is that it was said by the president and people around him, not you at the time, that he fired him, had nothing to do with the Russia investigation. Then he gives the interview with Lester Holt and says that it wasn't the Rosenstein memo, which is the original premise. Right. It was, I was going to fire him anyway because I don't were, like this Russia probe. How about and that's what got him in deep water. Uh, only because uh, uh, people wanted to tra trap him. Not, there, how how about trapped were, himself? How, so. It did not. How about there were five reasons to fire Rosenstein? I have to fire her. Yeah, Freudian, Freudian slip. slip. Yeah. How about yeah. there were five reasons? There's going to be nobody left if you guys have your way. Oh, there'll be a lot of people left. Uh, no, maybe, there'll be new people. Maybe, maybe Sessions honorable. has got to go. Rosenstein's got to go. A, or not Jeff. I mean, Jeff's a good man, but it may be honorable people. I mean, now he's a good man. The president has maligned Jeff Sessions again and again and again over his tenure, short as it's been. Maybe we can have some honorable men there, not Jeff Sessions. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. Jeff's been a friend for 30 years. I think the president has... Complex views about him because maybe he could have stepped up and handled this a little better. If I were the attorney general, case would be dismissed now over the improprieties in the case. Is that the right thing? Now, to how do? about Manafort? The first guy they prosecute is Manafort. And Rosenstein, we want to talk about Rosenstein, gives them permission to do it. Now, Manafort's case is in 2005. It had already been investigated. But may also include... How could that... Activities that they believe he was doing during the, his time then, with Trump and before. Then investigate Manafort all by himself. They are. Nothing. No, they're not. They're investigating as part of the uh, part of the special counsel investigation. The Justice Department should be investigating that. There's no need for a special counsel. Nor was there a need for twenty million dollars. Then why did Rosenstein pick one? Because he's scared. Of what? He's scared that he's gonna he's gonna have the thing kind of land on him. His boss recused himself. Why did Jeff Sessions recuse himself? But he didn't. He, but uh, 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 Rosenstein. Uh, Jeff Sessions recused himself because he worked on the Trump campaign, and he felt he was too close. And I guess was that the right thought, move? I can't criticize it. The president maybe as not being a lawyer uh, criticized it. He could have made either decision. Not being a lawyer or wanting to smear anybody oh, who seems on. suggestive Chris, of anything that is critical of him. That's just simply not fair. How is it not fair? If you're under in investigation, and you're what he's done to Jeff Sessions. If you're in a, how about what Jeff Sessions has done to him? What has he done to him? What Jeff Sessions has done to him is, 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 is stick him with a special counsel because he didn't step up and say, I can make this decision. Stick him with a special counsel that has now $20 million later come up with nothing. How is doesn't it want to stick him? That. First and, and explain to me why they even need an interview with the president if it isn't to try to trap him into perjury, One which, is what, which is what the judge in the Manafort case has said about them. All right, They basically on. are trapping people into perjury. All right, let's not flood the zone. <laughs> One, you can't. You can't compellingly argue that that's what they do in these kinds of sessions. You were a master of those sessions. What, what are you talking about? You, that it's just a perjury trap. That's why they want to talk to him. One, it's only a perjury wow. trap I never, if I, the president won't tell the truth. I, no, and, no. Oh, God, Chris, that's not true. And you should have more faith that's not true. in Chris, those men and Chris, women, especially when you've said they're the it best people that you've ever worked with. It is not true that a perjury with. trap is when, it's just when you're not telling the truth. A perjury trap is when you get somebody to lie about what you're telling the truth, which is the president would testify tomorrow if it was about the truth, the truth is he had nothing to do with Russia. I was on that campaign. He didn't talk to Russians. He had nothing to do with Russia. He is as surprised about the Russian connection as, as you would be. And, and why they, won't he just sit down and say that? Because you've got people that are going to ask him questions about what did you say to him, what did you say to him, and you got right. Comey coming forward who will lie. They believe Comey rather than... The, look, it's like Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart never would have gone to jail if she hadn't gone and testified. What do you think? We're she stupid? lied. She, uh, she lied. I covered arguably, that case. Lying, lying is black and white. It isn't black and white. The president is not going to lie. Let's get that straight. The president is going to tell... What the, gives you confidence to say Because that? I've gone over the whole thing. I've investigated the whole thing. There's nothing to lie about. Out of habit, he practices Stop mendacity. That. That, now that Out is, of habit, that's a, disgraceful, that's a disgraceful comment about the president of the United States. Out of habit, the president defends himself against the press he that spends time lying. He abuses the truth? He misleads, well, why, why, why are, he misstates, why aren't you asking and me? he sometimes lies. We want lies, to talk about liars. Which is saying something that he knows is untrue and he does it to if deceive. If we're talking about liars, why don't we talk about Comey, who's a proven liar? Because and one it, liar at a time. And the president of the United but that's States the guy, matters but most that's here. that's the guy they are going to trust against the president. Look, and as his lawyer, you don't know that. 
And if anything, know that. why wouldn't they be deferential to the president of the United States because and not somebody? Then they're going to have to explain how the hell they wasted 20 million bucks here's on my, an investigation that begins without any evidence and ends without any look, evidence. Here's my concern. million dollars later? First of all, Whoa. so far we know it's seven. And by the way, let's say it was 70. Many. Let's say it was 700. Why don't they want to give by the documents? By government standards. Why don't they want to give the documents to the House? about how much money it costs. Why do you think, you think Devin Nunes has been a fair broker in this? Uh, As he runs give, to the White House? Then give him to, to the To work Senate. hand in glove then with them the on Senate. a supposedly independent probe? He had to step away? He had to get investigated Man. for ethics consideration? Anybody who defends the president is some kind of a scoundrel. And anybody who lies about him is okay. Is that right? Who says? You do. No way. When have I ever said that? You're, you're telling me, about, you're, you're, you're talking to me about Comey, about Rosenstein. You're talking to me about Jeff Sessions having done nothing wrong. I mean, come no, on. No, no, no. I asked you, what did he do that was wrong? And it seems to be your answer is he stuck the president with this special counsel. So what's Jeff Sessions' job? To cover the back of the president? No, his Or to uphold to the justice. Constitution? To do he didn't uphold the Constitution. You don't need a special counsel in this case. Nobody else in the Justice Department is recused because Sessions is recused. So Rosenstein... That's why Rosenstein is there. Well, then why... Okay, so then Rosenstein should be handling the case. He doesn't need he a special is. counsel. No, he's not. He's given to a special counsel, he, and, and he'll his, have his judgment. Power. He believed oh, that man. he needed you, one. You and both sides of the aisle stood up and said, Bob Mueller is a great well, guy. Both sides of the aisle are protecting their backside. I mean, none, none of them... Uh, and none the of, president isn't? Well, and I you're am. not in the business of doing that now for the president? Well, I, I'd be violating my oath as a lawyer if I were. True, but here's where you're compromised on this. And oh, this is why I've been asking you to come on. I remember... You wanted me to come on because I'm compromised? No, no, not at all. I want you to come on because you're fundamental to our understanding of this and where the president's mind is on right. what he wants to happen, and I appreciate you taking the opportunity. You know that. Um, you have lived a life where you were fundamental to the operation of justice on the federal level, okay? You've held the jobs and been in key components of the authority structure of what is now under scrutiny. If... Anybody else were sitting in that chair making these arguments, I'd just deal with the arguments. But when Rudy Giuliani says stormtroopers, when Rudy Giuliani says that there is dirty at the top and that they would set a perjury trap and that these people are out to get them, Judge Ellis you said that. have spent decades of my life telling me yeah. when I would come to you personally and say, oh, the government, oh, look at their surveillance, look what they're doing. You said, these are the best men and women we have. They Don't are. judge what's going on by attacking their character. You're doing the opposite right now. No, I'm not. You call I'm them stormtroopers. They, they went into Michael Cohen's. How about Ma Manafort? No, no, no. Going How about Michael Cohen? I That's what both. you call them stormtroopers. Well, they, about. They, they invaded the attorney client privilege. How? I never did that. Michael I never searched Cohen, the lawyer's office. Stormtroopers. You don't go into a Nazi foot soldiers. You don't go into a man's house in the, uh, in the morning for a case that's 10 years did old. Did they have a warrant? Of course they had a warrant, but I didn't get a warrant. Were they professional when they went? Uh, were they courteous? No, I don't know if they were. Michael they Cohen says they were. Well, I don't know if they were. But I mean, he they, says they were. I Wouldn't sure he know? Heck, I sure as heck would be very upset if I were Michael's lawyer about their coming into Michael his Cohen law. was very upset. First of all, he says you're they mixing up respectful. Manafort and you're but you're still up calling them stormtroopers. Both of them. You know better than the. I don't know better, are. Chris. I know to say it. They are and stick with it and accept it and own it. You are. That the men and women working for the FBI are storm. The men and women were off base in what they did. D do they act inappropriately sometimes? Do you get a big liar like Comey, a big liar like uh, McCabe in the FBI, a guy with a conflict of interest from day one on the Hillary investigation, which is why he's lying to cover his ass? Of course you get that. You get bad people in the FBI, mostly good people. You get bad people in justice. You get bad people in both parties. Yes, we get bad people, and it's my job to flush them out, and it's my job to do justice. And if you can tell me that this investigation is worth the time that it's gotten and the money that it's spent, then you don't know what you're talking about. Unquestionable. This is an unjustifiable You know what's, you know what's interesting about this situation? I've now been told that I don't know what I'm talking up. about by you and by Nancy Pelosi about the same thing. Well, and both of you were wrong. Well, both Italian, you know, and we might be right. And here's why. You were both wrong. Here's why. We know <laughs> that Russian interference was real. OK, we know that they wanted to do it and they were successful in many of their efforts. We know that they did it because oh, they wanted geez. to help Trump but in, and hurt Clinton. But, uh, we need to get to the answers of well, why they the did answer. it, how they did it, the who answer. might have helped them and how to stop it. Well, the, the next Democratic time. Party probably helped them uh, oh, with the dossier on. and everything else. Come on. That's part of the basis for the investigation. Come on. The totally in, in uh, totally corrupt dossier that was developed on on the president. And uh, if you're asking me. Who've committed crimes here? The crimes have been committed by the investigators. Illegal leaking, 
lying about relevant matters, uh, invasions of the attorney-client privilege, which are unethical, not uh, criminal. It was carried by warrant. You have a great judge, who I'm sure you'll agree with, in Kimball Wood, appointing a special master, letting the teams apportion what they see as privileged and information, master, and the, having and her look at it. The special master has said that she's very concerned about the violation of the attorney client which is privilege. why she's put in place if she and had no concerns about it you wouldn't need one not been, the documents are probably going to get but they're right. following the law they're following the yes, law rudy the law you should respect that as much as anybody i respect it immensely that's why i'm fighting it out in court not 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 no, uh, but you're maligning the whole process you're saying they violated it well, and you're telling me you're telling me that it. you can violate my client's rights and I have to just accept it? No. Because I'm, I have a I'm lot saying more that you that shouldn't group. assume that they violated the rights it. and that they acted inappropriately, but you're saying they are. I, I have practiced law for years. I've never heard of searching a lawyer's office for it happens. documents about a client. You know it happens. Unless I'm sure you've aunt. done it. I did not, Chris. You were known as a muscled up guy when you not. were at the Southern I District. I'm a muscle guy. Get out of here. You didn't do strong things. You didn't take aggressive action. You weren't aggressive in investigations. And I do, and I do as a lawyer for my clients. And my client is being unfairly prosecuted now. He's being unfairly, no, he's not being prosecuted. And we haven't pointed out he can't be indicted either. He cannot be indicted. You want to dispute that with me? I think that it's a question of process. I know that, <laughs> I, I, no, no, but listen, here's what why. process? I know what, the, I know what the guidance is from the DOJ. I know the cases it stems and from. And you know that the special counsel is, is governed by that guidance. 100%. And the case would be dismissed. I mean, look, I guess theoretically he could choose to ignore it. Uh, which, but he, in which, in but which you've case, been told they won't. I am told they won't after some hesitation of two days, okay. which kind of right. puzzled me. Uh, second, if they do, they know it'll be dismissed. Fine. And if they do, the Justice Department would probably. Uh, uh, all right, have that's to fine. But there, for, all right, for first of all, just to not go so, too down this rabbit so the, hole, I'm not disputing it. But hold on, this is an important point. I think we have a graphic on it. If we do have the options for Mueller, uh, you can put it up. Otherwise, I'll just detail them. He could not indict the president. He could forego the guidance and indict the president. He could do something that's far more likely in this situation, which is we need to investigate, we need to put together the facts, and then the process with the president is different than it would be for you or me. He'd need to be removed from office first through impeachment, then he could be indicted later, or he could indict co-conspirators right now and send a message that was coupled with a reference for impeachment. So when you say you can't indict the president, I think we're talking about True, but also a now, function long of answer, process. Long, long answer now, I think, equals you can indict. But people. I think you have to understand it as <laughs> to why you can and what you still could do. And how in any way does that affect his ability to apply, to comply with the subpoena? If he is subpoenaed. What's the if he were subpoenaed, because, the president uh, of the United uh, uh, States, because, uh, not people, being able to be indicted but is people, irrelevant. But the people, he still has to comply. Wrong. Why? The people, the people uh, reading the memo selectively read it. The memo says you cannot indict the president, nor can you issue criminal process with regard to a case involving the president. Now, you're saying to me, well, what happened with Nixon? Nixon was documents. We've already turned documents over. Okay. We, we didn't raise any privilege. 1.4 million documents right. from which the case should be resolved. Number two, if you, uh, if you apply that ruling, there is no case in which a president has complied with a subpoena for his person. Uh, subpoena at, at personam, in personam. Clinton. Persina, no, he didn't. Clinton, Clinton did. No, they, they removed the uh, subpoena. He did, and then he... Then he because then, he complied, and he went before he the grand jury. He did not comply. He negotiated terms for a two-and-a-half-hour interview, which they wanted much, much more, and he did it on, on video feed, and he had control of the questions beforehand, or at least approval over the questions beforehand. Something that we're trying to negotiate, by well, the way, with, with this. You uh, can cut your own deal. You can negotiate terms. That's fine. But one. No president has ever complied with a subpoena. He complied. He spoke he did in front not. of the grand jury. He removed the subpoena. And then his Justice Department, I got the memo right here. His Justice Department issued an opinion in 2000 saying a president cannot be subject to criminal process. To reiterate that, because they were afraid the president had given away a, a prerogative of Article 2. Then the why, when asked about that situation in 1998, did you say, president can't duck a subpoena? Well, if you get subpoenaed, you got to comply. You got to go. He can't. He can't. He, I, I never heard of a subpoena for the president's person. Well, you said exactly that. No, no. And subpoena, you went on to say, Chris, that, Chris, let's distinguish between a subpoena for documents and a subpoena that takes the president out of the awful Oval Office and puts him in front of a grand jury or hearing. Can't do it. Can't do it. The second. You can do the first. Well, you never made that distinction before. 
Well, I never, I never, never, it never occurred to me they would try to subpoena the president. He, that's exactly what was going on in 1998. But and people are going to say I'm making this and up. And they lifted. Here's, here's Charlie Rose with you in the interview, and, they and you tell me what oh, you meant. Oh, come on. What, you don't want to hear it's it? It's not even relevant. If no. the president is asked to testify, subpoenaed. Really? That's really unfair. What you're doing grand right jury. now is extremely no, unfair. Says, I'm giving you a chance to explain come it. On the show. Oh, not going to do with, it. With all that, uh, that promoting of Avenatti, the ambulance. What president? happens if Robert Mueller? What does that have to do with this? President? Because they're all trying to bring Trump into that, and he's not involved in it, Chris. Look, Avenatti has been getting fed information that has wound up being more true than not, mostly about Michael Cohen, okay? Uh, what he's doing on TV, that's his business and the people who put him on. I'm talking to you about this, and it matters. And I play that, people, that piece of sound. It's not my decision who comes on uh, and not on all the time. With people like you, where I chase you around, <laughs> I ask you very much to come on because I think it matters. That's my call. But he's not my concern, and you know that. What is my concern is I played that piece of sound because I want to give you the benefit to give well, answers I, I just in context. It. I because just, otherwise, people just beat you Chris, over the head with it. Play it, and I, I, it's very explainable. Well, I, I did play I'm it. They heard it. I am talking about a subpoena for documents, which doesn't take you out of your office, Rather than a subpoena for your person, which I never contemplated anyone would suggest. But that's exactly what open. they were asking Clinton to do. Yes, but Clinton Sit was, down and answer Clinton questions was about opposing this. it. I right, didn't but he Clinton... eventually wound up sitting. And you say that legally that's because he had to. If you give me a subpoena and we negotiate terms and you withdraw the subpoena, I have not complied with the subpoena. The subpoena is now dead. But you wind up in the same place, effectively, that... which is answering questions under oath. No problem, but with conditions. Now, fine. It, because there was... Lack of clarity after my statement, not just me, God Almighty, professors, whatever. The Justice Department wrote an opinion, which we're all bound by, if we work for the Justice Department, which is you cannot issue criminal, they call it criminal process. Right. You can't issue criminal process to the president. End of story. Can't do it unless you change that opinion. If, if, if Mueller did it, the Justice Department could take the subpoena right back. Or you could just litigate it. Yeah, but right? the you could subpoena I him and litigate, you could litigate it. I'd go right to the Attorney General. I'd say, Jeff, you know, put on big boy pants and you go take it away. Oh, but he's recused from this. Then I go to Rosenstein and say, you want to try the big boy pants on for size? You put them on, and you right. get rid of the subpoena. All right, and he so would have to do it, or he'd have to quit. All right, so I hear where you are legally on that. We'll see what happens if, I don't think if that comes that. to pass. I have two reasons why we're not getting that. One, I believe we can work out conditions. Yes. That may be a little too optimistic, and not everybody agrees with me. A lot of lawyers disagree with me, but my client agrees with me. Okay. And second, if we don't, I don't believe they'll subpoena him. They Why don't not? Want to, because they have the... It, it, How does he end the probe without speaking to the president? He's got... He, I ended most of my criminal probes without speaking to the, to the subject. Uh, I decided... What is a no-go zone for you? What is off the table? If this is on the table, we will not oh, sit. 12 hours is sitting there. They're going to... So gonna, time. They're going to ponder this for another three or four months. Uh, they're going to ask any question they want. Uh, we're going to go into all this... Uh, uh, Ma Manafort and this one and that one. Um, so is there a, so Manafort's honestly, off the table? Is honestly, Cohen off the table? What categories are off honestly, the table? Honestly, what I'm saying now is unfair to the special counsel. They don't want to do all that. They, I would say we're talking about a difference between two hours and six. So time. We're talking about a difference between one or two subjects and three or four subjects. And I think with regard to their writing their report, we're almost in the zone of maybe we're disagreeing over 30 days. Uh, we're in a zone of comfort. So we're 30 days about what? When you'll do it or how long after it they have to I, issue a report? I believe we, I mean, kidding around, I said we get Hillary Clinton treatment. Write the report before the interview and clearer in a specious way like Comey did, and then we'll be interviewed. But they're not going to do that. And Mueller because said. Because this me, is an actual investigation that's yes. going on, and that wasn't. You're damn right it wasn't. Thank you for admitting that. I've never not admitted it. Good. That was about as phony an investigation as you could get. But they didn't believe they had grounds to go forward with an investigation. Except they then laid out all the reasons why she should go to jail and then said no prosecutor would do it, and every prosecutor stepped up and said they should. Well, that's not she, how Comey explains she it. She destroyed documents. She lied. She had people destroying documents. She had people who had got immunity and perjured themselves. Then why wouldn't Comey, a lifelong Republican, because prosecute the case? Because he believed she was going to be president. Comey is the first FBI director, maybe since Hoover, I'm not sure Hoover did this, who was making decisions based on, oh, she's going to get elected, so let me not do this. And let me go after Trump. Yeah, no, I, look, and nobody disagrees with you about that. He made moves that were unorthodox and wound up compromising a lot of different dynamics during the election. Let me ask you about, let's not run too far away. This has all been very helpful, in, by the in, way. Interview or report? That, that's the end result here. Interview, report. Interview, report. Do you need his testimony when he's a... I can break news for you, Chris. The president is not going to vary in any material respect from what he said publicly already. We've, he's already spoken 
in detail but it's about different it. when you're being asked the questions in that setting by it, it investigators won't be, it, it, it won't be any with different. perjury hanging over your I head. I guarantee tell you the truth. it won't be any different. I guarantee you it won't be any different. Maybe but 2%. That's, but, but what if he's not telling the truth he to the public the and then he goes in the room and does the same? That's he why people don't want you to have to him sit tell down. the truth, and he has told the truth. He has no reason not to. There's no possible jeopardy here of any kind except from an unfair uh, media. Look, if, if that were true, then he wouldn't have jumped around with his story the way he has. He wouldn't be so itchy to undermine the probe the way he is if he had nothing to worry about. You don't attack the process the so way So what he that is. says is you don't attack a process that is trying to victimize you unfairly. You just let him do it. And if you do, you're accused of obstructing justice. How are they victimizing him unfairly? They've said he's not a target. They've left him alone until now. Uh, you see the way they've conducted themselves. They don't leak the way the White House does. What have they done that makes you think they're so jaundiced they, they, and bad? They don't leak? You think Mueller's leaking? No, I think the FBI has leaked. But I'm talking about the Mueller probe. Well, they, they get information about Mueller. I mean, they get information about Mueller. How could, how could the Times have written the report they did yesterday without getting confidential information in advance of the Horowitz report from the very uh, FBI? So let's get into that, this. The that, Washington Post and, and the New York Times reporting and, and about I, And I am going to say something about the FBI that needs to be said on behalf of the president and me. I have total respect for all of the FBI, but the people who are screwing around. And I have always felt, I put FBI agents in jail who screwed around when I was a prosecutor. I put police officers in jail. This doesn't mean I don't love the New York City Police Department. I love the New York City Police but Department see, more than anyone. Yeah, but now you're representing somebody's interests who wants to undermine the administration of justice in this country. No, he doesn't. You got Christopher Wray, his hand-picked choice to head it, comes out and says, not a witch hunt. I said that when I was uh, being confirmed. Now that I am there, I know it even more so, not a witch hunt. Well, it is a witch hunt. Well, then why would Ray that's, say it That's is what the Times... Were, because maybe he isn't, doesn't want to get involved. Maybe he wants to look like he's independent. Maybe uh, mistakenly he... Maybe he's right? How about he's that? he's wrong. I know more about the case than he does. You think you know more about this case? Oh, yes, he, he, he shouldn't know a lot about the case. I mean, the, the fact is, it started before him. If he knows a lot about it, he's going to have a lot of problems. Oh, he's in charge of the investigation on that the, level. The reality is that Christopher Ray came after the investigation True. started... He should disassociate himself from the Comey misdeeds because he's nothing like Comey, thank God. And, and there's no reason that he needs to be involved in this except to get the information that's necessary. Now, what he's got to do is plug the leaks in the FBI. You agree with that, right? Look, people... How leak. did the time... No, I'm not anti-leak, How? Rudy, well, you... <laughs> because I'm a journalist. I like leaks. I like to get the information well, I so I can for, I believe test for an power FBI and get agent, transparency. It's a, a, an offense for which they would be fired. That's what, look, but there's also often risk for people so we who can leak take, information. you got whistleblowers all over the place that make a difference for the American people. It is one thing. The leaker is violating the law. The leaker is violating his oath. You or me getting the information, no problem. We're entitled to get the information. And we're entitled under the First Amendment to speak about it and use it. Right. But the, Even though the President oh. of the United States has raised questions about whether or not I should be able to get that information and whether or not we should be part of the hedging process on getting after leaks. You know that he said what, that, right? What's hedging? I don't know what you're talking that about. That maybe one of the ways we deal with these leaks is to go after the journalists as well. You like that idea? Well, the Clinton administration did that. I mean, the Obama administration did that, too. Holder they, went after journalists they, a little they, bit. They it was some, roundly condemned. And then, and then the guy in Chicago put a journalist in jail. But what I'm saying is this. For so you, that was totally wrong. Stupid investment. That was wrong. You didn't like it, right? I, I believe it's wrong. But the president is president suggesting has... that maybe you do that to us now. Is that okay? Doesn't want to put anybody in jail. The president doesn't suggest to put any of you guys in jail. He has done exactly that, actually. Now he'll say I was musing. <laughs> I was just throwing it out there. But he has. He says we're the enemy of the American. Oh, you people. guys had broadcast from inside the jail. We'd have to let you broadcast. From no, inside. look, it's not a joke. And I'd bring you. Uh, I'd you bring know, you. I think about patients. it sometimes. You, you know. Do? No, you don't. That maybe a day will come to pass where I, he wants I'll to give, move I'll on leave. people who criticize. Now that I left my law firm, I'll represent you. Yeah, I'll great. Keep you out of jail. Just what I need. <laughs> Let me ask you something about this confidential informant story. Uh, it is troublesome that somebody you say he shouldn't interfere. The president can find out what's going on if he wants to. Who shouldn't? Do you say the president should? If the interfere? president would interfere now, my it's goodness, not interfering to guys, ask whether or not you had someone inside. Then, then he should ask me to do it, not not him. Fine, then he should do Through that instead of, of instead of quoting a Fox News commentator who's saying apparently because they don't know either. If you look at the reporting. I don't see how you guys get to your conclusion with what we know right now. It is just as likely that somebody from inside the campaign turned and came to them with information that it is that they put someone in there as you would call a spy. Again, odd for you to say, you know, spying is a pejorative. And for you to say that they would be doing I, I, this I to a president's campaign. I say campaign. informant as, as, as regularly. Would you prefer informant? 
for who um, this person is? No, I wouldn't, but people in the DOJ, people you worked with and respect, so, hate so, that word. So we either have an embedded informant or we have a deep throat who's reporting after the fact. You either have somebody who came from inside the campaign okay. and said, I have information, which happens to square most with the reporting that we know. What do we know? Uh, Simpson said, he said a couple of different things, but he suggested that he knew that the FBI was getting information from the inside. We know that when Christopher Steele went to the FBI and said, here's what I found, I don't know how much of it is true or untrue, but you should know this, they said, oh, this squares with what we've been hearing from someone else, which sounds more like someone has come to them from inside to talk to them than we well, put someone if, in if, if somebody, ourselves, because well, they would need well, a basis of knowledge let's, let's, to do let, that. Let, let's go back, let's get to conclusion first. Conclusion is no wrongdoing. Uh, uh, the, wrongdoing of what? Uh, by the president. Who, who, who reaches that conclusion? The, the FBI, if the Times is to be believed. That's what was leaked. I do not get that from the, the Times. The Times said there was all. no evidence of connection between President Trump and, the, and Russia. But based on this so, one wait, wait, narrow wait, piece wait, of what they wait, were wait, wait, doing wait, wait, investigatively, not what Mueller has, continue. No, but that's what Mueller started with. Mueller started with a conclusion, nothing wrong had been done, which makes it hard for me to believe that you would start Mueller in the first place. I usually began with either some evidence a crime was committed or certainly no contrary evidence that no crime was committed. But unless you can show animus on the part of Rosenstein to start this in the first place and nobody fear raised... Animus? Huh? Is fear animus? No. It, and no, and, and, and you don't have, a, and you don't have proof of emotion. fear. You don't have proof of fear well, either. Rosenstein... No one if, stood up in any meaningful way when he was picked, Bob Mueller, and said, this is a travesty. It was received as something that should be done nobody, and done well and hopefully done okay. economically. Nobody at the time knew whether it was a travesty or not. Now that we look back, we see that there was no reason to appoint Mueller in the first place. No, that's what the, you think. No, that's what the Times told me yesterday when I saw that they had concluded after 100 days of an investigation that there was no evidence linking Trump to Russia. Now That, that has been exposed or revealed by the investigation. And, and illegally leaked. But it's not I over. Agree. So we don't know. But they never we should do have know started. they've indicted a ton of so people. I'm they've sitting gotten there, people I'm to plead there, guilty. I'm they've sentenced there, somebody. I'm sitting there in the U.S. Attorney's Office, and they come to me, and they say, we want you to open an investigation of Chris Cuomo. Uh, well, why? Well, Which because, may happen, by the way. Because we did 100 days of investigating, and we didn't find anything uh, negative no, about that, it. No, but, but I think... That's what happened with the president. I don't now, think that that's now, a fair Now, Chris, to be fair, okay, to be fair, I don't think it was ever presented to Rosenstein that way. But that's the reality. That's the reality. And because I think the FBI didn't tell, or the, Comey was, was, it was really about the firing of Comey that led to Ro, Rosenstein's decision. Four different, decision. well, right. It's funny, because you wouldn't give me that earlier on in yes, our I conversation. Did. You had left it out of the analysis. No, the president firing Comey had as no. much to do with Rosenstein but triggering a special no counsel as to, anything else. No reason, to, no reason to investigate. The president has complete discretion to fire anybody he wants. What about corrupt intent? Uh, doesn't apply. How not? Doesn't, there's, there's no evidence. You don't threat. think a president can obstruct justice? Uh, he can, but, he, but in the case of firing a subordinate who's going to be replaced by somebody else on an acting basis immediately. But it's why you fired them. Corrupt intent. That's part matter. of the legal analysis. It doesn't matter if, in fact, it can't result in anything. The, the investigation continued. Investigation expanded. But obviously firing him charged but it, a suspicion I that recommended he was firing and Comey needed on to make the day. it independent. There were 10 reasons for firing Comey that have nothing to do with corrupt anything. I know, except the president offered several different versions and eventually settled on, I didn't like what was happening with the Russia well, probe. Well, that could be a legitimate reason. I'm not sure that was the president's reason. Could be, or it could be corrupt. But it, that's but what he is, said. But if there are five that's other reasons, said. then you can't focus on that one and pretend it's the sole reason. The man mishandled the Clinton investigation, both to the detriment of Clinton and to the de detriment of But Trump. look, it, but it's the all playing... It's, was, but it, a, was known as a consistent leaker uh, way back, way back, he was uh, uh, dealing with cases improperly. But you now have someone who people respect in Mueller, okay? I know that uh, the president's been on a little bit of a jihad against him, no, trying to break not. down. Oh, please. He has said so many pejorative things about him, about his conflicted. Does the president ever get the benefit of the doubt with you, Chris? Oh, ever. Rudy, or on this network, tell, which is disgusting? I, actually, I would tell you something. I think he gets the benefit of the doubt much more often do you know, do than you, know, you, do you give know, credit for. Do you know that m most people think that I'm crazy to come on here? That, that it's Why? so unfair to the president? That do you think this interview has been unfair? Yeah, I do. You think this interview Absolutely. has been unfair? Absolutely. Why? 
because I don't think you've given me a chance to explain uh, how injustice this case is. I don't think you've given me a chance to explain the basis of it with the FBI report that was faulty. The FBI report that came to the conclusion. I, I don't understand how a man can be prosecuted when you come to a conclusion and do anything wrong. I mean, how can you investigate a man who, who, where you come to a conclusion and do anything wrong? You guys never, never, you didn't even play up that part of the report. The, the, yesterday in the New York Times, I underlined the section that said, after 100 days of investigation, no evidence of collusion with the Russians. And I would suggest that you're taking that out of the context of what the reporting was. But however, Rudy, to your main criticism, you've now said what you just said at least five times during this interview. Which? That there is no purpose for but an I had investigation. It, but I had there is no I had proof get, of I had to get. I had to get it in because um, but I'm, saying you've I'm a said lawyer it at least five times by and interrupting, I've... by getting da, 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 da. And then I've been told it doesn't really say that. Uh, it's out of context. You're damn right it's out of context. It's called a quotation. It is out of context. No, right, but I'm saying that within <laughs> the context the of that piece. But look, I... FBI clears Trump before Mueller probe. That's the headline. That's not the exact headline, but let's say it I is. I know it's not, but, but it should be. <laughs> yeah, that's not the headline. The but that's why I pushed lead. back. That doesn't make Somebody, me unfair. I just that's learned, the job. I just learned that the word lead is spelled L-E-D-E. Yes. Jeez. Do you know why? Because somebody came on, uh, on Fox and said, the lead is buried. The and if, lead is and, and, if the pres and if the president writes the word lead, L-E-E-D or L-E-A-D, and I say it's L-E-D-E, is that me being unfair? Because that's what you guys say. You say, why are you chasing after the president for these kinds of Depends things? Depends on whether I like you that day or not. That's, and look, and I know that's what I got to go, Chris. I know you do. You've been, I got to go do my job as a lawyer. You've been very helpful in coming here to help us understand I hope so. where your head is. It hasn't been, it hasn't been, good, it hasn't been good for uh, people feeling, you, you know, you're going to get a fair hearing, though. I got to tell you. I got to be honest with you. I like it. All the time you've had today to make the points good. that you want to make, you got questioned about them to justify an, your I'm, basis. That's the definition of fairness, by the way. Okay, if, okay, that's good. I, I can live with that, but a lot of people can't. <laughs> well, as long as you're okay with it, I'm, I'm okay. okay with it. Look, I love it. You we, know, we I'm need a lawyer. You as part of the this discussion. is what I do best. I am just thankful the president selected me because it's an honor to represent him. And you don't very often in my business get a chance to represent an innocent man. You have said you think it's the most important case of your career. No question. So for the country. Not just As we go president. forward, you are always uh, welcome well, to an I open invitation to and make I, the I, case from the president's perspective. I will, I will, I will uh, absolutely make that point to everyone. And I promise you, I'm always <laughs> trying to be fair. I know that, Chris. All right? Rudy Giuliani, thank, thank you for being here. Appreciate it. We will unpack all of the things that Rudy says he didn't get a chance to argue in this yeah, interview. And then you got to deal with it. Right, well, I'm, like, you know. I'm a knight of the empire, so I should be there. All right, so I wasn't fair on that point. We'll be right back. <laughs> You're no knight of the empire.